Hey, hey, this is a fun app. We talk about Seattle, Aruba, and a hell gig. By the way, we're doing bumpers now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's what this is. All right, enjoy the show. It's a good one. What's up with Bumper Pool? You are now checked in to Stand Up New York Labs. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is fitting at me. All right, hey everybody, you know where you are, you know who it is, and you know what you're doing, and you know what you ate for lunch. This is Mark Norman here, and that's old Jerry List. Yeah, that's his full name, if you didn't know. They call me Joe for short. Uh huh. But you really saved it, because that was the saddest sound we ever started the podcast with, and then I felt like you called an audible. You were like, uh, we. Yeah, yeah, a little misdirect there. Yeah, well, we're recording two in a day, and the the last one ended on a weird note, so we're very nervous. We're all, and... we, we, we do this for you folks we, we open up we let it all hang out and it's it's scary in this day and age yeah it's scary and uh, it's also weird because now we're recording this episode not knowing what the feedback was from the previous Aye, vey. so who knows I mean we might this episode might come out and we've been under fire for the last seven right. days this is the grace period of like well it's not out yet. So. Yeah, we're just living our lives freely Ooh. but uh, I want to apologize for everything I said boy we really went crazy there. And uh, Mark is uh, took his own life. Yeah, I'm dead. Uh-huh. So yeah, but uh, oh boy. But now we're back. We're starting fresh. And hey, let's just live high on the hog. Who knows what'll happen? And uh, we're still here today. Hit the music. Yeah. Um, what do you think about these? All these movies with the dead people running around. It's the not zombies. To me. The zombies. I, the vampires. Come on. I hate a zombie. I hate a vampire. <laughs> I hate a wolf. Yeah, uh, a, a teen wolf or a, a werewolf. Get I like the first teen wolf. Teen wolf was all right. He played hoop. That was fun. I like any movie where there's a school or a car or a job. Yeah. I want a dude with pants on. Yeah, but I, I just don't understand. The, the, he's dead. They're dead. Everybody's dead. Come on with the dead. You could put a gun in my ass. I won't watch Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I can't do it. Well, they're not dead. They're aliens or I, some shit. I don't know what they're monsters or ghouls. <laughs> I think they're goblins or oh, they're hobbits. Hobbit. I never saw Ugh. that movie either, and I heard they're all great. I feel bad. Our, 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 my dear friend Chris Walsh. He, he's a regular listener and a brilliant comic and a brilliant mind, and I mm-hmm. uh, love him. But he's all about these Harry Potters and these Lords <laughs> of the Rings. Uh, P.U. <laughs> and, these, and these zombies. This guy loves zombies more than I love uh, my wife. Yeah. But, uh, it's not it's not my cup. I don't get it. I don't like it. But I tell you what I do like is the uh, the zombie with the, uh, the uh, you know, his name. The Woody Harrelson and the Jesse Eisenberg. That one's fun. Well, that was tongue-in-cheek. Yes. Which I like. I still don't know what that means, the tongue-in-cheek. It means uh, it's uh, poking fun at itself. It, it no, knows I what know it's what doing. It, I know what it means. I don't know what the root oh, vagina I'll sh- is. I'll show you what the root is. Yeah, I know. It's that I, face. I get it, but it's just... It's not great. It's very stupid. It is. There's saying. a lot of dumb sayings out there. But I like that movie. Zombieland. Zombieland. Zombie Zombie there. He's got a thing. He's got a cameo, yeah. Yeah, Cam. And uh, so I like uh, I like that movie. And uh, That was innovative. Just, the Walking Dead. Is just, come on. I don't, what, are, what are we doing? They're I like walking around dead? I want dialogue. I want character depth. I want, uh, you know, Woody Allen. Give me something real. Yeah, I'll tell you, I saw Spotlight. I think we talked about that. Yeah, we did, yeah. I love Spotlight. That's a movie. Yeah, that's a movie. And uh, I saw Trumbo. Trumbo. Ooh, interesting. I mean, I love Louis C.K. more than I love my father, but, uh, boy, this movie is a real piece of hunk of junk. Yeah, Louis C.K. might have actually spoken to you more than your dad. Yeah, well, probably. He's uh-huh. certainly shown more affection. I'm only kidding. What if my family listens to this? My dad's great. He's sweet. He put a house over my goddamn head. He went to work every day. Yeah. Still goes to work, and he gave all of his money to me. Yeah, he's got a mustache. Not not to me, but, uh, you know, had, there was a house and food, and there was right. a car involved. You always have food in your house. You always have cookies. It's a very uh, comfortable living situation over there. Yeah, you were over my house. We watched... Uh, how great was that? We watched... 
a, a new or what is it, a season nine Seinfeld? Yep. And to cleanse the palate, we watch a season three. Yeah, we watched yeah. the three. One of the best ones. But those season eight and nine, boy, they're appalling. Ugh, no Larry David. What can you do? They bother me. And then we had some cookies. We watched Donnelly's late night set. Yeah, that's right. And then we a lot of New Yorkers doing late night. Jacqueline Novak just did one the other I don't know when this will come out. This will come out in, you know, 2017. But she had a great late night, I thought. James Corden. Yeah, that was a good set. Yeah, she did a James Corden and uh, just funny stuff. And Is it James Corden? I have no idea. I don't Flash know. Gordon? I don't know right. if I like that guy. He's English. He's fat. Come on. Yeah, what are we doing? we got to have all these uh, foreigners take Taking our jobs. Oh, jeez. I'm joking. Well, America's number one, baby. No question about that. My parents are immigrants. Yeah. Blow me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Anyways, so, uh, boy, that was a fun time, though. We had, war- we had warmed up Deb List cookies. And- yeah. Well, it's funner than throwing a bunch of chocolate chip cookies in the fireplace, warming them up, and then just sitting there. We had a glass of milk, oh. and uh, we watched some late-night TV and some Seinfeld, and we really yucked it up we to yuck- the wee small hours. I got to tell you there, Sloppy Jalopy, you're really opening my eyes, because that, that was a night we did the Boston Festival. We did some shows, and... Uh, the old me would have just gone out drinking all night, just found a couch in the middle of uh, Pan's uh, Labyrinth or whatever the hell, and you said, no, let's go home, and we'll watch it, and it was great. I'm a big home guy now. Yeah, home is good. I like to go out. I go to the sporting events. I go to the rock and roll concerts, and uh, I like to have sex. with. But I like, I like to go home and have sex with the old wife. I sit in the bed. I eat some cookies. I watch TV. Yeah. And that's the thing. I started doing comedy when I was a, a wee teen, mm-hmm. just 18 years old. I had 11 pubes and uh, no diseases on my dick just yet. Those were the days. Yeah, and uh, but you, you go to the nightclubs every night for 15 years. After a while, you're like, I want to go home. Yes. I love going home, and I got for the first time in my life, I got a comfy bed and a good girl who shaves her legs, and we, you know, I, I kiss her nipples, and I masturbate, and I finger my own asshole, and I just sure. love it. Yeah, the yellow ass. Yeah, I love being home. Right. Yeah, it is nice. And, and then you wake up refreshed. Like, I wake up oh, with the, uh, the Satan's cock in my dick, Yeah. and it's, you know, I'm hungover, I hate myself, the shame, the anxiety, the money I spent, the time, I got no sleep. Yeah, you got anal seeds in your pee hole. Yeah, yeah. Now, don't get me yeah. wrong, I'm spending money like a uh, like a Dominican pimp, as DePaulo used to say. You do spend some cash. Well, what's the point of working hard and making it if you're not going to spend the money? Because, what are you saving well, it for? You save it for a place or a car or something, you, a big uh, ticket item you want. I'm saving money, too. I have a savings. Uh-huh. I have a good savings. I don't touch it. My checking, I go to the fucking World Series. I just don't want to be one of these people. You have a nice, big house. It's... There's a lot of people, I think, in this country that uh, they're not living. They think they're living what they want to do. They have a big, giant house in seclusion. I got a tiny apartment. You keep in mind, by the way, when you see me spending this money, I'm paying five hundred and forty dollars a month in rent. Ah, that's big. So you're spending three times as much in rent. Pretty much, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to games, but I'm I'm, going, I'm spending less money. Aha! Uh-huh. I went to the. Uh, the World Series, which was something. You just don't want to be 50 and have your big, giant house and your big, giant car, and all of a sudden you get cancer, and you're like, I should have gone to the World Series right, and the Seahawks right. game and to the Pearl Jam. Uh, that's why I shack up with all these dames. I'm like, I want to look back and go, I fucking lived. Yeah, unless you get HIV pause. Uh, well, that's livable. Like Charlie Sheen, who we can just make a fucking mockery of because he's a white guy. <laughs> He's got HIV. It's hilarious. <laughs> Fucking Charlie Sheen, that piece of shit. Fuck yeah, you. You yeah. got AIDS, you fag. You deserved it's it. It's true. He's got a fatal disease. It's a punchline. He's just a punchline, this guy. Yeah. Can you imagine if Neil Patrick Harris came out and said, I'm HIV positive? Oh, wow. That would be a fucking tragedy. People crying and Doogie Hauser. Well, I will say that I think a big part of it was he was like, tiger blood, and I'm fucking whores all day, and I'm, I'm winning. I'm winning. That's I'm- part of his disease. He's an alcoholic maniac who didn't get enough love this yeah. guy. Yes, he was he's a, manic. He's a tragic manic figure. Yes, but you know what can you do? But uh, but all, it's all that's all that's not just white. Guy. I mean, all celebrities. Britney Spears is shaving her head, and everyone's like, ah, what a retard! And right? Like, yeah, she's been a star since she was nine. Her father finger fucked her, I think. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. You got to realize. That's when you realize these celebrities are so tough. You got to be fucking tough, especially now with the uh, the tweets oh. and the twoots and the twerks. It's a nightmare. I'm afraid of all of it. I, I'm scared. I'm I'm think I'm gonna. I, I'm. I'm not even... I, we have 2,000 listeners. I want to kill myself. Right. I'm terrified. Everything I just said, I'm scared. I'm going to get backlash and fired and beaten and hung. Sure. Hey, we hit two grand. That's pretty solid. And we got a lot more than that. But, like, I want to be like a Colin Quinn. That's, like, a good level of fame, I think. 
I said that to Colin one time. We were hanging out. Uh, we're pretty Ooh. pretty close. Thank you, everybody. That could be insulting, though. You don't, you don't want to be like, hey, I like uh, your low-end fame. <laughs> you don't want to say that to a no, guy. No, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. All right. Let me say, you don't okay. jump the gun here. I jumped. Yeah, you're saying I'm insulting. I complimented. Oh. All right, let's hear it. I say he has the perfect level of fame because I go, you have the level of fame that just enough people you're making their day throughout every day. Mm. You're bumping into enough people that like like 15 people a day are like, oh my God, it's Quinn. Yeah. But you can walk around, he can live a life, he can eat dinner and walk around and be, he rides the subway. Right, right. And when I've ridden the subway with him, there's usually one or two people that's like, hey, oh my God, wow, you're calling. Yeah. And that person is thrilled. I want to be able to make somebody's day by seeing me. Right. But not have a bunch of, hey, look at you. Or, uh-huh. He said this. This yes, guy yes. said something. Yeah, can I tell you a quick Quinn story? Tell me as many as you want. He's one of my heroes, a big fan. So uh, after I got back from Florida, I get into that that car, and the driver is from Brooklyn. And I'm so obsessed with, like, old New York and Brooklyn in the 70s and whatever. So I go, oh, you're from Brooklyn. Where'd you grow up? He goes, ah, Bensonhurst, you know, big, fat, scary Brooklyn guy. And I go, oh, you got to go see that Colin Quinn one-man show. It's all about Brooklyn. He's like, Colin Quinn! Colin Quinn! I fucked his cousin. Wow. I go, get out of here. And he's like, yeah, Maude, she was a hot Irish piece of ass. I have it all on tape. I was filming him in the back because he was so animated and so cliche. Wow. And uh, then two nights later, I see Colin Quinn. Mm-hmm. And I go, hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, I met a guy who fucked your cousin. He goes, Shane Pally or whatever the hell the guy's name was. I was like, yeah, yeah, you fucked Maude. He goes, oh, everybody wanted to fuck Maude. It was a great moment. Her name's Maude? Yeah, Maude. That's old school. That's old school Brooklyn. Here comes Maud. That sounds like a Jewish name to me. Maud. Maud. That's how he said it. Maud. Um, oh, that's Maud is not. It's weird to be hot and name Maud. Maud's like a Gertrude or a uh, a, a Bertha. Yeah. It's not a hot name. Maud. Boxcar Bertha. There you go. Scorsese's first. That's right. Yeah. Um, well. All right, sorry, you were saying, I cut I you know. off there about Quinny. I don't know what I was talking about. We talked about Sheen, we talked about AIDS, oh, we AIDS, talked about yeah. celebrity. I have no idea what we talked well, about. I'm going to take the reins then. I will say this in defense, sorry, I just uh, thought it was that. <laughs> I will say def- this in defense of Charlie Sheen being a punchline oh, with HIV. Right, right. Is, it's not quite the death sentence. When Magic got HIV, we thought he was saying, I'm going to die. Yeah. Because that was back in the night. We didn't realize if you're rich, you can survive. Sure. Uh, until, you know, a rich guy got it and survived. Yeah, Magic, I think his career picked up when he got the the HIV. Well, he's, uh, you know, he's almost without it now. Right. There's like barely any traces or whatever the fuck. Can we settle this score once and for all? Maybe we got we got Chris on the on the keys here. On the twos and the ones. Uh, what the hell is the difference with HIV and AIDS? Because people just interchange them all day long, but there's a clear difference, in, and I, people get mad if you say AIDS, and some people get mad if you say HIV. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a huge difference. Well, HIV leads to AIDS eventually. Ah. But AIDS is autoimmune deficiency syndrome or disorder. It's, I don't know what the S is, but it's a pretty serious autoimmune disease. The caucus? Uh, what, what the hell? What's the S in AIDS? Sebring? Sea biscuit? Syndrome. Yeah. Syndrome. Syndrome. Well, it's autoimmune. I know that, and it's a pretty serious business. So HIV is better than AIDS. Much, much better. HIV is on the way to AIDS. I don't even get yes, it. Yes, HIV. If you're HIV positive, HIV eventually becomes. AIDS, or at least it mm, used to be that way. Interesting, but AIDS is like a fucking death sentence. You're in trouble deep. So you can get, you can cut it off before it gets to AIDS. Well, I think now you can. not Before you could not. Back in the eighties and the, in the early nineties or whatever. Uh huh. Like, Magic is the first person to just fucking get HIV positive. First person that we know of, anyways. Right. That uh, just never developed AIDS and uh-huh. got AIDS because before that it was just like yeah, HIV straight to AIDS. Right. And there was no medicine. There was also, I think, a, a lot of uh, prejudice involved. You sure. Know, for, sure. Uh, the eighties, particularly. I think people were like, "Fuck you, you homos. You you deserve what you get." Hmm. And then there's a lot of people, there's a whole contingent of people that had uh, sympathy for people that got it through, like, blood transfusion. They're like, it wasn't your fault. Right. But these other, they were like, you, you're gay, you had sex, you fucking maniacs. Yeah. So, wow, well, so... Bad rap for those people. The, this, the suspicion that Charlie Sheen was dabbling in the homosexual community. Ah. And then he was doing drugs, too, so he might have got it from uh, intertransvenous, sort of the fuck that term is, Transylvania. Mm-hmm. Transgender. Yes. 
But uh, you know, I, I, you get HIV. It's a, uh, it's a fucking, it's a bummer. It's yeah, a sad. That's a big potato. Yeah, it stuck to have. Mike, Mike D had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not but, what killed him, by the way. Yeah, I think HIV now is very livable and manageable with yeah. uh, the proper medicine, with access to the proper medicine. Oh my God, that's a that's a scary thing to hear. Yeah, it's scary, but uh, you know that's why you gotta you gotta wrap up the business when you're fucking these people, or uh, you get a good one and you take off the wrapper and you have a nice relationship. There you go. I've been wrapping up lately, but that's good. Uh, yeah, that was that one damn Uber. But we're not wrapping up. We're only 14 minutes in, for God's sakes. No. I gotta talk about Seattle. Please, Can I, I, talk about I love Seattle? Seattle. Oh, it's my favorite. I gotta stop, let bygones be by gays, and just admit to myself that Seattle is my second favorite city. Ooh, hey, all right. Well, maybe third. I mean, Boston and New York are uh-huh. home, and uh, but but I try to think of these because I love you know. L.A., and I like San Fran, and I like uh, Chicago. Chicago. I love very, very much. Boy, it's so tough. A lot of great cities you got to go country. to New Orleans once. I know. I've never Sloppy been to New Joe. Orleans. That's it's a great city. one. Well, maybe if you... I've set up about 75 gigs for you in Boston if you can return <laughs> the favor one time. Well, it's a flight involved. It's a whole thing. I can fly. I'm not afraid to fly. Okay, you all right. You want me to fly? I'll fly right now. I'll set up a gig. Let's I'll go down to the fucking Big Easy. Bye, you. Hey, ladies and bon ton roule. Farts. Uh-huh. Uh, so I went to Seattle. I just love it out there. I fucking love it. I got the real inner thing with the the Pearl Jam and the Nirvana uh, yes. and the, and the Pacific. It's magical. The trees are so yeah, high and yeah. green and the rain and the buildings, Mount Rainier. And mm-hmm. it's very hip. It's very community. Mm-hmm. And it's very green mm-hmm. as a, you know environmentally. And it's a real community out there. Great artists. Yeah. It's just an artistic city. Good comedy scene. Yeah. It is spectacular. I love the Pacific Northwest and Vancouver as well. And uh, Vancouver's beautiful. How about the rain, though? Well, the rain would be depressed, but I'm only visiting. If I was living uh-huh. there after a while, but that's what makes everything green and magical. That's it takes true. It's all full. It's lush. Circle. Oh, very lush. Yes. Yeah, you're lush sometimes. I'll take lush. Yeah. Then there's uh, a lush. Is also like a female drinker. That's what I thought you meant. No, I meant you're lush. Like oh, plush maybe. Plush. I think plush is what we're looking for. A hue? I don't think lush is right. Plush. Flush? Yeah, but you said lush, but I don't think that's right. I think it's plush. I think it is. You said lush. No, you said lush first, and then I said a lush can also I'm be saying, a female No, drinker. no, the, uh, the, the, the greenery is lush. No, but I think plush is the word. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I think if you have a lush plant. I don't think you can. Only if it's drinking booze, but you have to feed it the booze. No, plants don't drink. Anyways. What? Lush, it baby. Lush. Hey, what's I'm back. plush mean? Plush that's is a like a Stone Temple Pilots album, I think. That's a uh, like a, a stuffed animal. Oh wait, no, I think it's rich. When you're rich, you're plush with money. Oh, really? I've never. Flush. That's flush. What's flush? <laughs> rich with money is flush. What's plush? Plush is uh, like a you know like a rich fabric of silk, luxurious. Oh, yeah, plush, like down, it's plush, yeah. a plush blanket. Yeah. By the way, is it fucking 185 degrees in here, or am I crazy? I think you're flushed. I think I keep saying too many controversial things in my mind. You gotta, it's you're, freaking me out. You you got a hue of a pink. Oh, my God, I feel like I'm going to take my own life over here. I feel like they're just going to come after me. Don't you have that feeling? <laughs> oh, oh, baby. They're all going to come with guns and shoot me and rape yeah. my asshole with shotguns. I wake up just cold to... <laughs> I, I really do. I, I get that all the time. Every time I check my Twitter, it's not a fun thing. I yeah. press my at thing, and I'm like, oh, God, here it comes. Right. Ah, I'm terrified. YouTube comments, forget it. Oh, boy. I have dreams that dogs are attacking me. You ever get that? Oh, yeah, all the time. Really? Yeah, dogs. Oh, that makes and, you feel uh, better. I can't get up. I have a, I'm, I'm waist deep in water, and I can't ah. move. The clo- I'm late. Or I'm, this is what I get the most. I'm Is it driving? Driving? driving. I'm, I'm I get driving, the same thing. I'm driving uphill and the car won't go. People oh, are after me. Oh, interesting. That's the one I get the most. I like. There's a bunch of people mad at me and I'm trying to drive it, but the car won't move and the people are catching up to me. I get Whoa, it about twice a wait. night. Google that because that means something. And I, I'll tell you mine. That's I anxiety. Get, I get the skidding. I'm always skidding in yes, a car. Yes, I have that also on a highway. I'm just winding down the highway at like 80 miles an hour. I'm terrified the whole time. I have that too, and I'm drunk. I'm a drunk ah. fucking idiot. Fucking up. I get drunk. drunk dreams all the time. Interesting. What do you got on that? Uh, that's going to uh, take a minute. And uh, See, I thought flush was like when you go, oh, that's that that uh, light is flush with the wall. You know, it's well, that's flush. a different flush. Yeah, yes. okay. Flush is, I mean, there's many meanings. There's also you flush of shit down the toilet. Sure. So there's a few meanings. Uh, flush, lush, and plush. 
How about gay is just a single meaning now? Come again? Nobody is using gay as happy whatsoever, other than the Flintstones oh, reruns. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, that road has just been completely... We're a gay old time. Gay is sex, and that's it. Yeah. No one's ever like, oh, I was pretty gay last night. Yeah, gay they should bring that back. The we gay should, should jump on that. But it's confusing. Because you're like, ah, he's gay. Right. Oh, he has sex with men. No, he's happy. What's wrong with you? Right. Doesn't work. Chris, what'd you find for us over there? This is all different variations, but it's pretty much uh, feeling like you don't have control over some aspect of your life. Yes, uh-huh. control. Well, that's that's the fucking industry. I got no control of the I industry. I got no control. All these, all the people listening, they can uh-huh. just go, hey, you suck, and then they all hate you. Interesting. I Boy, can't control. I love a dream analysis. Mm-hmm. My therapist, I tell him a dream, he, he goes beep, boop, 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 computes it, and it's, he nails it. Boy, Dane Cook used to have a dream analysis bit that was oh, one of the best bits ever. Is that right? Oh, my God, it was amazing. I don't know that one. He had a great bit. He's like, well, when you have a, when you have a, it goes on forever, but he had one way, you have like a dream, and you wake up, you never fall back asleep into the dream. Mm. You know, it's like he's, he's fucking Cindy Crawford on the beach, and then he wakes up, and he's trying to like get back to it. He's like, yeah. no, no, I'm on the beach with Cindy. Right. He's like, when I have a nightmare, he's like, I got, I got some giant lobster chasing me, shooting lasers at me. He's like, I wake up out of it as soon as I fall asleep, and he it, he acts it out. Uh huh. He's like, the lady's just the lobster's just leaning on the wall, looking at his watch. Uh, and he's like, ah. it's like he's, <laughs> as soon as he falls, the lobster's like this. It's like oh, he goes back good. to attacking him. It's much more of a physical. It's a Dan Cook is a physical guy. Is that right? Yeah, I hadn't noticed. But anyways, that bit was great. Anyways, let me get into Seattle. Hit uh, me, baby. I went to the talking about spending money and going to these sporting events. I just went to the World Series. And I spent a bunch of money, so I was hating myself. And I was like, I gotta act like I don't have any money. Mm-hmm. But then uh, Sunday night football, which is the most watched program on television. Is that right? Yeah, isn't that interesting? I would not have guessed. I That's... thought sports were going on the way of the dodo. What, are you crazy? <laughs> a little. I think you just wanted to use that saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I suspect. I, think, I thought they were, you know, like, baseball's numbers have dropped. Baseball's doing well, but, I mean, uh, NFL is fucking NFL's unbelievable. NFL's always going to be there. Yeah. That's the number one. But, uh, and so anyways, Sunday Night Football uh, is the number one show. I'm reading Al Michaels' book. Uh, he's good. and Oh, he's Great. Brooklyn Jew. Yeah. <clears throat> Last night I had a crazy moment. I had uh, I was reading the Bernie Sanders Rolling Stone article, and then I put it down on top of this Woody Allen book that I bought the other day, and I was like, I sent it to Sarah. I was like, boy, I, boy, look at these Brooklyn Jews. I just love them. And then I look over, and I had Al Michaels' book on the pillow wow. that I'm reading, and next to that was a Dick Schapp book. Uh-huh. So I have four books or four reading materials, right. all Brooklyn Jews. Not to mention... You probably got a Larry David thing in there. I mean, that's my and whole Neil life. Diamond. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of Neil Diamond oh, books sitting I around. I love Neil Diamond. I love Neil Diamond too, but I'm not reading his memoirs. At oh, geez, I got a, a full size poster. <laughs> I got a Neil Diamond. Uh, uh, what do you call that? Like, a, what do you call those pillows that are full size? A pillow. No, full size. It, oh, yeah. Uh... It's like a boyfriend pillow. <laughs> Asian Asian boyfriend pillow. I think it's safe to say this joke is passed either way. All right. Well, that joke went the way of the dodo. <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> um, what is that pillow called? God damn it! I Call in if you know. What are those window kids? Remember the window pillows? Come again? Those? Window pillow? <laughs> Who puts a pillow in a window? No, in the nineties, late eighties, early nineties. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> Later, 80s, early 90s. Look up window pillow thing. There was what? a window pillow. It was a product, but it was it had faces. It had a window on it. It had legs and arms. Oh, yeah. Those, those, those like... fucking freaked me out. I hated those things. <laughs> they were like cabbage patch kids or whatever. Is, is it hot, hot here? It's Getting hot. It's so fucking hot. You talk. I got to take my cans off. All right. Wait. I got to get my shirt off. What window I... pillow. I hated that. Those things came yeah, to life. Yeah, look at those. Yeah. Chris found it. What are they called? That is terrifying. What are they Window pillow. They're called window pillow. Get that thing off the screen. I hate it. <laughs> What's the name of the feet. pillow? The sleeping boyfriend pillow? Something like that. Pillow boyfriend. The window pillow thing was a product, and people would buy it. It is a thousand in here. I'm not crazy. <laughs> We're both on Molly, folks. Boyfriend what is it? pillow. Boyfriend pillow. All Boy, right. You're going to hate this episode. No, I love this. It's gold. Uh, we're having fun, but I don't know. If that, that's freezing in here. Um... How about Anyways. that when, when people say, you go, you're nervous for a show, and they go, just have fun. Ah, oh, shut up. All right. I hate that. Just have fun. But tell that to a, an NFL player. Just have fun. I think they do say that. It's dumb. But go work. Go make a touchdown. Anyway, make a touchdown. But you sound like a real broad when you talk about sports. It's hilarious. What do you say? Make a touchdown. Yeah. You say, take a touchdown, you dumb dumb. Take a touchdown? <laughs> you make one. You don't take one. I'm joking. You take an interception. <laughs> make a touchdown. Um, I anyway. say make whoopee. We're making whoopee. Ho, 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 ho. 
Uh, boy, that Amber Nelson is so funny. She's a funny girl. Oh, hilarious. Anyways, so I go to the Sunday Night Football. That's what's happening. I think I pulled my cans out or something. I don't I think know. I pulled a hammy. Um, George Hamilton. Uh, all right. All so right, I'm in so Seattle. You're in it's Seattle. Sunday Night Football, and uh, the Seahawks Woo! and the Cardinals ah! are playing. And I can't not go. Well, there's an event happening. Remember we went to D.C. and there was the hockey game going oh, on? I'm like, it, yeah. it killed it. burns me up. Yeah. And it's like, I think the equivalent is for you, the girl texting, being like, hey, what's uh-huh. mind fucking? Yes. I see a hockey game, a football game, a bat, or a concert. I got to get in there. Yeah. I, the idea of... 80,000 people having fun. Yes. And me being outside. I'm like, get me in that ball game. Sure. <laughs> Take my money. I got to get in there. I got to get a dog. And I got to watch some ball. You get the dog? I love a dog. I'm oh. about to fart. Real hardcore. Lay it on. Maybe put, I should put it in the mic. Put the mic. I was going <laughs> to say that. We're never done this. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, you got it. That was real. <laughs> that was wow. That was adorable. That was great. That was, a that was a perfect little toot. That was great. <laughs> that was a little tasty. Uh, how's that uh, mic foam? <laughs> oh, boy. I apologize to whoever comes in after. Ooh, that was a little tulip. If we had one female listener, that is a done deal. <laughs> that was adorable. That, that was, was a, great. That was like a girl fart. It was like a... It was a little cherry of a fart there. It's not like a dart hitting a board, you know? <laughs> well, something hit the back of your pants. <laughs> it smells real weird over yeah, here. Yeah, that was a really, a really cute little toot. That might have been a low point in the show's history. Ah, or a high. Yeah, that's true. We do a lot of burping, never farted. It's a smelly point, that's for sure. <laughs> what would you eat there, a smoothie? I smell some spinach. Smelly point. <laughs> I think it's radish. Radish, yes. Um, How do you make a radish rose? Well, you soak it in water for 40 minutes and insert a <laughs> knife and twist. That's another bad episode. Oh, it's a He's in the shower. Come on. Kramer's in the shower for five hours. Those plot, those those premises were such dog shit. Yeah, they were Larry cartoonish. Was gone. They were ridiculous. Out, out, out to lunch. Ridiculous. All right. So we go to the football game. And yes. Have you ever been, if, you gotta go, if you're listening, you're a sports fan, you got to go to fucking whatever the stadium's called, the Seattle Football Stadium it is unbelievable. Did you say Cardinals? They played the Cardinals. Okay. Yeah. The Arizona Cardinals. Uh-huh. Probably the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh-huh. Which is also still a baseball That's why I was operation. confused. Yeah. But there used to be a football operation called the St. Louis Cardinals. They moved to Arizona. Got it. And the Los Angeles Rams moved to the Los Angeles. They moved to the Kansas the St. Louis. Now St. Louis is moving back to Los Angeles. Uh-huh. And then the, very kooky. the New Orleans Jazz went to Utah Jazz. Yes, uh-huh. and they kept the name Jazz. Which is a little off-putting. Similarly to the Minneapolis Lakers, moved to Los Angeles and kept the Lakers. Right. Very odd. Yeah, now we're the Pelicans, which is not good. But at least there are lakes in Los Angeles. True. There's probably a lake. Tapu- Tapuka? Topeka? Well, there's the L.A. River. There's a lake. Is there a lake? Toluca Lake. Toluca Lake! Yes! That's the one. Uh, anyways, let's focus up here. Seattle. Sunday night football. Seahawks. We go to the game, and uh, I have a certain close friend who listens to the show, and he asked me not to tell this story, so I'll keep it a secret. His name is Barbara. Yes. And uh, it was right after this, after, two days after the Paris attacks there, which were tragic Ooh. and I feel terrible about. I didn't hear a thing. So we're walking into the game. We're in line. It's packed. Security's extra tight. We look up, and we see some white birds flying, and my friend uh, Barry goes, uh, Oh, wow, they must have released some doves for the Paris. Oh, the peace. They're seagulls. <laughs> We're at the Seahawks game. There's fucking literally three dirty seagulls, like, ah! Taking right. shits, and he's like, "Oh, look at that!" They really. He had a moment. He literally thought they released some uh, doves for peace. Well, he's it got was a, adorable. His, his he sees things through a, a nice filter, a nice eye. Yeah, he's got a nice brown eye. Uh huh. Put um, a finger in that thing. It was one of those moments where you're like, "You're a fucking idiot." That's and he's a like, fun uh, He's like, "Don't tell anybody about this. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. I hate myself." <laughs> Outside the stadium. That's great. Like a, like a city street. Seagulls. We're in the ocean. Yeah, it's the most seagull infested city of all time. I love the. Idea idea too of like yeah we'll just get rid of these doves right we'll just let these go forever right for peace so, so that was cookie so we go in there and we're in the stadium and that stadium i literally i have ear damage my ear hurt. i'm gonna need tubes oh no tubes I'm, are no good maybe i'll borrow your tubes you still got them i got they need a wash all right well i'll wash them off and stick them in my ears because i got some tube issues now because 
That stadium, if you're a sports fan, make the trip out. Go to a Seahawks game. It's so fucking loud. And I've been to Ohio Stadium at Ohio State. I've been to Michigan Stadium. I've been to a lot of college basketball games, the Garden. Nothing compares to this. It's so wow. fucking loud. You're in pain. Your ear hurts. Really? Because they built it where the roof is over, mm. and it's you know 65,000 people, and they're screaming. It's not just clapping and like, woo! People are going, ah! It's so loud, your fucking ears are shaking, you can't hear. Wow. So it was really, we had really a lot of fun with it. I kept yelling, and I'm a big Patriots fan. Mm-hmm. We beat them in the Super Bowl, as you'll remember. And I kept yelling, Malcolm Butler! He had the interception <laughs> uh-huh. last year. And I, was, I kept going, I love big dick in my ass! Yeah. And only Derek can hear because I'm screaming in his wow, ear. Wow, it's and that it's so loud. Fun. I'm like, cover my ass! Oh my God. Black cock in my ass! <laughs> Pull it out and whip me in the face! It was so much fun. Wow. So much fun. You could yell whatever you wanted. That's wild. And I was like, these people are all fucking retards. Yeah. Deadbeat, white trash, fucking retards. <laughs> and, and nobody could hear. And he's just laughing. We're laughing. And we kept taking turns saying outlandish shit. Oh, my Lord. It's so loud. You That's can't hear. wild. There's people right in front of me that can't hear. And I'm like, Malcolm Butler sucks all your dicks. You Holy failed. Shit. You stink. It was so much fun. It's so freeing. They didn't have that moment where the, the shit went down and you're I just yelling. kept waiting for a guy to break his leg. And they're like, oh. And I'm just like, suck everyone's dick. Right, right. Uh, but, man, it was really fun. And it was a classic game. I had people texting me. Like, this must be insane. Because the Seahawks had a big comeback. And I just jumped in. I started just screaming and cheering because it's fun to just yeah. cheer. Everyone's going crazy. And then I'm laughing because it's such a silly thing to be jumping for a team I don't give a fuck about. Right, right. But at one point, they had like a sack, and the quarterback fumbled. They picked it up and ran to the end zone to like take the lead. And the place went ape shit. Wow. It looked fucking crazy. Everyone's going, ah! And they're throwing popcorn and screaming. It's so loud. Your ears fucking hurt. It was shake. And literally, the building is shaking, which is scary because we were sitting in the nosebleeds. You yeah, know? yeah. Never had my nosebleed ever at a game. No. But, That's uh, uh, exaggeration. Yeah, so the whole stadium shake. It was really quite a thrill. That's something. Yeah, if you're a sports fan, you like going to sport. You got to go to that. Put it on the bucket list. Wow, because they are fucking. And they had the the twelfth flag. It's the whole twelfth man thing. The audience, the crowd is I call it the audience. But they raise up a flag, and the player, the guy that rose the flag, was a a player that hurt his neck. He's wearing a neck brace, mm. and it gets fired. The place is going ape shit. I mean, it is fucking Whoa. wild, man. You got to bring earbuds. I know. This, when you're leaving, there's all these earbuds everywhere, and I should have because my left ear is all kooky. Oh, that's why I farted. Yikes! Well, you heard it here first, folks. Ear trauma leads to flatulence. Yep. And uh, but uh, boy, I got a lot of other Seattle stuff. But uh, I want to. I don't want to. Hog here. No, we, hog, hog. Well, I got this quick story I want to tell because this was something I went to. I was in Kirkland, Laughs mm-hmm. Comedy Stop, which but, is a suburb of <clears throat> Seattle. Yeah, it's a suburb. It's about, I don't know, half hour from Seattle, or whatever. Mm. And uh, it's great being on the road because uh, my friend Derek, not Barry, yeah, or different Barbara, guy, a different guy, he would come out. During the day, would hang out. It was great. We Perfect. went and saw uh, the movie Room, which is very intense. Room? Read, read the book. Yeah, it's about this woman and uh, her five year old have been abducted and they're in this room. And uh, it's, boy, it is fucking intense. Yeah. Unbelievable. I missed that one. <clears throat> so it was good. Unbelievable. All right. The most intense movie viewing experience of my life. Holy shit. And smokes. nothing comes close. Heart pounding. Me and Derek were holding each other, wow. making out. I mean, it is so fucking intense, you can't believe it. I thought I was going to throw up. People were gasping. You didn't get confused. Cocking my ass! Oh, shit. Different crowd. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I did that once, but then people were into it. They were okay. like, go Seahawks. They knew what I was talking about. Probably broke the tension. But, uh, so anyways, I'm in Kirkland, and just a great, it's always a great week when you have friends, because it's like, I'm not on the road. Yeah. We're hanging out with family all the whole day. Right. So that was nice. But uh, I did the Late Show Saturday, and I get on stage, and there is a group of youngsters, young, white couple. They're not even couples. They're just like college girls, and I don't want to be uh, mean, but they look slutty. You know, they got okay. short dresses. They're sitting with their legs. I can see the girl's panties. She's just drunk uh-huh. and done up, Lots of too much makeup, you know, the whole thing, and there's like kind of broy guys, and they're all just chatting. I go up and they're taking selfies when I first get up there. There's like a group picture, which is always annoying. I'm on Bad. stage doing comedy, and there's six of them posing for a selfie. Uh-huh. Like I'm like I'm right here. I'm doing a show. Yeah. Here. What are you doing? You Come paid on. to get here. Right. You know. So then this kid, they look like they're 21 maybe, or they're underage, but they're hammered. They're spilling drinks, and they're sitting like stage left but front table mm-hmm. and the guy and the girl they just start making out making out like the plane's going down oh wow tongue and like like 
not kissing, but like full on making out. And then she has her legs up on the chair. Uh -huh. Trying to see her pussy. Wow. It's real crazy. And he's got his hand up her legs and her dress. And, and wow. the whole audience is just watching these two. And I'm like, this is insane. I'm like, this is Jesus. the craziest thing I've ever seen. Just drunk. Caught, and they're all pointing at him. They're like, oh. Oh, how was that veg? It was like they were 13. Not a bad veg. That's a hell of a heckle. Yeah, it was It was crazy. So then behind them is sitting this middle-aged black guy, and he's just shaking his head. And I thought he was with him because he was at the same table. Uh -huh. At one point, he gets up, and he's like, yo, man, what are you doing? I could hear it. I just tried to ignore him just to perform to the audience. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, this is too hard. What are you doing? This is crazy. He's like, you got to relax, man. You gotta relax. Wow. And the kid's like, what? Get out of here, you fucking weirdo. Yeah. And the guy sits back down, and I just keep, they keep making out, so I keep looking over there, because it's very distracting. Yeah. They're like practically fucking right here. Sure. And they're all like, oh my God. And it turns out they didn't know each other, so they're just like hooking up. What? Like this guy was just next to this woman, and he's like, hey, babe. That's why they're making out so hard, because he's trying to get the guarantee. He's trying to get in there. He didn't know her? No. It's That's just like happened to be drunk college guys next to drunk college girls. Oh, my God. So it keeps going, and I'm like, oh, my God. A lot of distractions tonight, folks. What a night. This is something. What yeah. the fuck? And I try to just go back into my act. Sometimes I'm telling the jokes at them. You know how you do that? Sure. That's a big move of mine. Uh, so then the guy gets up again, the black guy, and he comes. He's like, all right. What do you say? Come on. Up and at him. This guy, audience member, fucking bounces the table. What? He's like, let's go. Come on, guy. You don't want to be here. He's like, you're drunk. You, you, come on. You're making out. You're not even watching the show. You're distracting me. You're distracting <laughs> them. Come on. Come on. And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? I love him. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I'm like, what is up with this guy? So he walks out. He walks behind him. And I see him in the back. And it's like dimly lit. But I can see him. What? And he's talking to the guy. And the kid's like kind of laughing. He's, the guy's got his arm on his shoulder. So he's a the nice guy. Running. Oh, yeah. So he's just, like, talking to him, and he kind of shuffles him out the door. And he comes back. I keep doing my act. And after a minute, I'm like, all right, I got to ask. Are those people gone? The crowd was like, woo, they're gone. Wow. Yeah. And I go, I go what, what's your deal? You know these people? He's like, nah. He's like, they're drunk. They got to get out of here. Well, this guy's a superhero. He's a superhero. That's what I said. Wow. I was like, you're like Superman. Yeah. what are you doing? And I made myself laugh. This is an old, old joke that people have done before, but it made me laugh so hard. I was like, I'm giving you a CD. After the show, I'm going to give you a CD. And I go, they're 10 bucks. And uh, I, I couldn't stop laughing. I never laughed myself on stage. That's fun. It's not even my joke. It's like an old bit. Uh, I couldn't stop laughing. I was like, that's such a funny that's bit. That's a funny bit. Uh, but anyway, he's just like, yeah, they were done. What are we going to do? I can't. I, I'm trying to watch the show here. Right. An audience member, he's just a good Samaritan. Wow. He just got him all and he shot him all out. He walked him to the back. He's like, come on, go ahead. Get I out of there. He shoot him like a, like an old puppy. It was amazing. And then he sat back down and he put his arms behind his head, watched the show, laughed it up. Wow. I was like, you're a fucking hero. I've I love, never seen anything like it. I love the clapping, too. Like, come on, here we go. Yeah, he's That's like, hilarious. Yeah, you're fine. Come on, yeah, keep it moving. He's like getting a horse out of a yard. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know who's driving, but uh, fuck them. I've never seen anything like it. Wow. Here. Audience Ooh. bouncing. It felt very like uh, socialist or something. Yeah. It was like, yeah, we're all taking care of each other here. <laughs> this guy should be wearing a cape. Yeah, he's a hero. And he loved the show. How great is that? And a black superhero. We need that. I've heard some, I've heard uh, some blogs. That's true. I've heard, I've heard some bits. You don't know have any black superheroes. Yeah, well, he is one. Yeah, my thing with the black superheroes, make one. You want to have a black superhero? Draw one up. I think there are a couple. This is what Greg Stone talked. There are a couple. They just don't get the, uh, ah. you know, the screen time or whatever. However, it oh, works. we got to make a good one. Don't, yeah, don't make one that can break dance. Yeah. Oh, jeez, Mark, come on. I, I, I don't. I, you know, I don't read the comics. Who knows? Yeah, uh, but that's pretty crazy. I did an audition the other day, and I did. I got in there late. It was a commercial audition, so there's like very little, and it was me and this girl, and she was kind of hot too. And mm -hmm. I was like, ah, I got here late. I didn't get a chance to read the. Th is there a copy? Is there a line? And then she was like, we both break dance, and then we do handstands. And I was like, oh shit, really? And she's like, no, I'm kidding. Oh, I like her. I kind of liked her. Yeah, but it was funny because for a moment I was like, oh shit, okay, that's fun. Yeah. And she's like, I'm joking, you idiot. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, but it was. I kind of had a thing for her. That's hot. Yeah, she was hot and funny. By the way, mm -hmm. is there anything more? More uncomfortable on Earth than an audition. Like, there's not a, a less welcoming place on the planet. No, like, you show up, you don't know where to go. There's a like a cunty secretary, like I don't know, go over there. She sees a hundred actors all day or a million. Yeah. And then there's like you go to the file thing, the little Manila folder, and you're like, and you sign in, and they just wait. Uh, the whole thing's awful. Yeah, you meet. You're a piece of meat, you're and meat. everyone looks like you. Yes. And uh, and ugh. no one wants to help anybody. You go, hey, man, and you're scared to ask, like, is this the right door? And they go, yeah, I don't know. Who are you? And one dick always comes out and goes, nailed it. 
Everybody go home. I got it. Oh, I've never seen that. You've never seen that? No, oh, no. It's the most hack cliche. I nailed it. All right, everybody. Take, uh, you can take off. Oh, right. Blah, blah, blah. And they're always an hour behind or something like that. So yeah. you got to sit there for it. Then you get in the room, and then you, you hate yourself in the room, and uh, the whole thing. So there's four people behind a card table judging you, mm. and they've seen 100 people already. Uh, and you're there for 11 seconds. Your yeah. whole day. You take a train to the thing. You ride a horse, and then you're in there yeah. for eight minutes, and you leave. You memorize the whole Gestapo. How about you and I? I did an audition together at the same time before we were friends. That is wild. Isn't that insane? Yeah, we did. What was that for? It was a Budweiser. It was the black uh, Miller High Life That's guy. That's what it was. The big security yes. guy that carries around the case. Yeah. And uh, we were supposed to be with that guy. Right. And uh, we had met and we were kind of buddies or whatever. And that was the day we were driving to Boston. Yeah. We were, like, we're both, we were both have auditions at the same time because we were the same manager. And we're like, we'll do these auditions and we'll drive. We were in the, the room together. That's right. You were. I remember thinking you were very comfortable. I was terrified. I've always been comfortable with those auditions. I don't give a fuck. I don't yeah. want to be in commercials. Right. Which is a big advantage. Yeah, I want to be like, a commercial. This is goofy. I don't give it because if you're trying to pursue acting, you like desperately need to get something. Yes, yes. I don't need to get something. I'd like to. Yeah, because it pays money. It's sweet. But I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Hey, right. yo, farts. Yeah, Ally Bank. We suck each other's dicks. And it's much easier because you're laid back and you're whatever. And it's all looks. That's why I've it's gotten all two looks. commercials. Yeah. I have like a nerd right. white guy. Fuck you, look. And then we left. I remember we went and got pizza. Yeah. And we talked about Montreal. Oh, is that I right? Still remember, I remember you saying, just give it to me. Just give it to me. I'll do well. And I remember being like, wow, this guy's confident. Oh, I still feel that way. But I, I like, oh, You got to do an audition. You have to nail that one show. And I'm like... I'll be good. Yeah. I won't make anyone look stupid. Just right. let me do fucking Letterman. Let yeah. me go to Montreal. I promise you'll look good. I, right. I'll do a good job. And then we get in the car. We drove five hours. We hit it off like two queens and a quack. Well, we had Seinfeld. We had Seinfeld. You know, have a, a religion. Love and knowledge and passion of Seinfeld that is a, is a real strong bond. Yeah, and I feel like we've quoted a lot on the show, and it probably goes over a lot of heads. I think a lot of people are in there, though. Some people get it. Yeah, I, I, Pearl Jam and Seinfeld for me are two things that you you meet these people that have similar obsessions. And you kind of feel them out, and you're like, oh, you're one of where this where it's like the Blind Melon video with the bees. Yes, yes. And you're like, okay, we're in. Right. I'm trying to think what my Pearl Jam is. Dylan is like that too. Dylan's another like Mulaney's a big Dylan guy. We I kind of bonded Dylan. over that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was great. That was a great ride. Yeah, great ride, and it's still going. Still going. We're riding high, folks. Uh, so Seattle was a, was a hit. Seattle's slow. I got a couple more, but I, I got to hear from you over there. You got, I'm sure you fucked six people with AIDS. Since oh, jeez, I hope not. Uh, well, let's see. I went to a little place known as Aruba. Ah, Aruba Ray. Oh, wait, shit. I All wanted right. to talk about something else. You didn't go to Aruba. I did go to Aruba. We'll get to that. I did Big J's TV show. Oh, that's insane. It's called What's Your Fucking Deal? Big mm -hmm. J goes up. He does only crowd work. It was at the Bitter End, which is such a good venue. George Carlin's first album. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, AM, FM. That's Bitter End? That Bitter End, yeah. I think that's on the wall here somewhere. Uh, Class Clown is over here. Uh, maybe and so not. Is an evening with Wally Lando. Oh, uh, yeah, Occupation Fool. That's what I was getting confused with. Uh -huh. But yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, there it is up there. Oh, there it is. It is up there. there it is. Yeah, Bitter End. Yeah, wow. Uh, no kidding. I had a fun joke. I was like, all the greats, uh, George Carlin, Woody Allen, Cosby. That killed. Oh, that's fun. But yeah, uh... So yeah, it was just fun. All crowd where you can't do material. It's packed. There's TV cameras everywhere. We always talk about. We I just love being in the TV world. Of course, I love a shoot. You know, they got the guy in the back with the headphones on. He's got like eight monitors going, and he's yeah. doing lights and all that. There's a truck. There's a truck. There's cables coming out of it. You know, food. Yeah, and uh, they just treat you so well. We're in the green with Andy Kindler's riffing, James Adomian's being a weirdo. It's like Joe DeRosa. It's like Colin Quinn. It's just such a good, you get your makeup on, you're laughing at them. And then the guy comes in, he goes, anybody need drinks? You go, I'll take two whiskeys and a blowjob. And he's like, right, coming right up. All that. It's just great. And then you go out. And I was, I've done the What's Your Fucking Deal show before, but I did it, just the show, yeah. not on TV. Yeah. And I bombed. Yeah. I bombed horrible. So I was a little nervous because I'm a material guy. Yeah. As are you. Yes. So, and also Big J goes up and just uses all the crowd work in the room. Yeah. And Colin Quinn went first because he had to get out of there. And I had to follow Quinn. I'm following a hero. Yeah. So Quinn goes up and he's just like, what is this? This is stupid. Like, I'm on N uh, NBC CISO. I was on SNL. You know, he's doing that whole thing. It's on NBC CISO, which is their like oh, uh, Hulu. Oh, okay. It's their online shit. Yeah, but it's a big deal, though. Yeah, still, it was a good show. And then I went up, and I had some good riffs, and I got the hell out of there. And uh, it was just a great time. We all went to the after party, and Bill Burr showed up at the after party. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was fun. 
right after doing Madison Square Garden, shows up to this bar. Yeah, the after party, I got the invite, but uh, I was my show. I was done at like nine fifteen. That's what we were talking about. I'm like, uh, it was the party started at midnight. Yeah, I had a backpack. That's a backpack. I'm like, I gotta it. kill time for two hours. Carry a backpack. I'm old. I'm old. I'm old and gay. And I had to go home. I was like, I went home and yeah, had sex with my wife, who I love. There you go. Unless you're jumping the gun on wife. She's not your wife yet, buddy. Well, you know, it's fun. All right. What's the difference? I don't care. Yeah, she's got a ring. You correct me on stuff. I try to do it to you. Come on. It never works. All right. So uh, go to the after party. Now, my flight for Aruba is at 7 a.m. Oh, boy. And I do the whole, I'm, I got a girl on my lap. I got a whiskey in my hand. I got a quesadilla in my ass. And I go, you know, it's uh, 1 a.m. My flight's at 7. I got to be there. It's 5.30. It's an international flight. Yep. So, uh... And she goes, she looks me in the eye and she goes, well, I guess you're going to have to pull an all-nighter. Uh-huh. And I go, oh, I guess you're right. And we just drink the night away, stay up all night, go back to her place, a little of this, a little of that, rolling the hay, rolling the who, mm-hmm. rolling the he. And uh, I, I doze off after the sex and I wake up and I look at my phone, 358, and I go, all right. I gotta go home and get my bag. Do I do that now? Or do I take another cat nap? Oh boy. Oh boy. So uh I just get up and I leave. And I go all the way home, get to my house at like four thirty, I grab my bag, go straight to the airport, flew to Aruba. Yes, Aruba. A little fun in the sun. Yeah. Sun and sand. But I'm on no sl- I slept on the plane like an hour. I get my bag, get jump in the cab, twenty five bucks to the hotel. What a view. I mean I just I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, 20 minutes ago, I was having a drink at, in the West Village, and then it, after that, I was going down on this chick, mm-hmm. and now I'm, I'm, I'm in the sunny city of Aruba. Yeah. City? I believe it's a country. Country. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I get to the hotel, and I just hit the buffet. I, I run into Brian Scalaro, another comedian. We yeah. have a buffet together. I'm in that loopy, like, no sleep mode, you know, like, whoa, what the hell's going on? It all was very surreal. Yeah. And uh, I remember getting to the hotel, and I was checking in at the front desk, and I had the lady come up with a train. She goes, fruit juice? Yes, I love that juice. How great is fruit juice? It is really good. Good very fruit fresh. juice. Fresh. Orange-ish, right? Kind of an orangey orangey red. red, yeah. Red. And I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah all right, great. So I chugged the fruit juice. I hit the buffet, and I crashed for, like, 20 years. Hit the show that night. The show's in the Marriott. It's in, like, a ballroom kind of thing. And boy, did I bomb. Yeah, it's a tough room. It's, it's not tough. an easy sell. Because you got people that have been on the beach all day. Right. So the sun drains them. They're on vacation. They're in relaxed mode. Yeah. There's, not, there's no tension there. They, and they don't, want to, they don't want you to talk about gays or racial stuff or, like, you know, politically incorrect shit. Right. That's not what they're looking for. No, they want, you know, plain peanuts are small. Uh, my wife is late for getting ready and all that. You right, know? right. So, yeah. That was tough. So that night, I'm, I'm like, I got some good, I got some good sleep. You know, I, the show was at eight. I probably woke up at seven thirty, took a shower, and went to the show. So I'm up. So uh, Brian Scalaro likes weed, so he's like, "We gotta get some weed." And we're on an island. Ray's like, ah, "I'll get you the weed tomorrow." Aruba Ray, and Brian's like, "I need weed tonight. I can't sleep without weed." He was kind of getting real fidgety. Wow. So he's like, "I'm going up to my room. You better find me some weed. You said you'd get me weed." And Ray's like, "Shit." So me and Ray are hitting on these two local chicks, uh-huh. and Ray goes, "Can you get weed?" She goes, "My boyfriend has weed." So we're like, "Oh, that's already weird. You have a boyfriend." So she's like, "I just need a ride to my house. I'll get you the weed. Good deal. Good weed." We go, "All right." So now we're driving out in the sticks. Now it's you know two in the morning. We're driving yeah. out in the sticks of Aruba. I've, I've never been here before, and I'm already on a drug deal. So uh, we pull up to her house. Dogs are barking. There's no street lights. We walk into her backyard. She's like, ah, the door's locked. And we're like, isn't this your house? She's like, well, it's actually my boyfriend's house, but he's not here. This is like Clemenza, the Godfather 2. Yeah. Oh, there was something going on. So me and Ray are like, dude, it's 2 in the morning. We're We're half in the bag. She's like at her house, but not. The dog is barking. There's weird seagulls above us. And she goes, hold on. Let me let me look behind this boat. She had a boat in her backyard. Wow. And we're like, all right. So Ray goes, I'll be right back. And I go, what, do you leave me? He goes, don't worry, don't worry. She goes behind this boat, and I see her just, like, fidgeting around back there and, like, fucking with her outfit. I'm like, she's going to come back with a gun or, oh, or a, a club yeah. or a machete. 
And she's going to bludgeon me or stab me. A gun club. But I was so drunk that I was like, let's see what happens. It was like a movie. And yeah. I was like, yeah. Well, she comes out with a machete. I'll, I'll fight her, whatever. So Ray pulls his car into the driveway and flashes the high beams. Oh, boy. I look back behind the boat because now I got some view. It was pitch black. She's pissing. Oh. She's pissing back behind the boat. Yikes. So I was like, well, but it's, I've never been so happy to see a chick pop at a squat, you know? Right. Trying to score drugs, and she's over here pissing on boats. Yeah, well, everybody's drunk. And uh, so I was like, thank God for those lights. I saw some pee. That was fun. Yeah. And she comes back around. She's like, well, let's go. Uh, let me use your phone. So she takes Ray's phone. She calls the boyfriend. They speak some wacky language I've never heard. So Papiamento. Papiamento. Yep. So she's like, all right, he's two blocks away. Let's jump in the car. We jump in the car. We pull up to the boyfriend's house. And I'm like, what is he doing over here, this other house he's at? She's like, oh, he's getting a haircut. I remember thinking, like, how weird is that? Two in the morning, just getting a haircut at a friend's house. Wow. So he walks out, giant guy, MMA, like, giant black guy, wearing, like, a wife beater and short shorts. And he's like, hey, what's the problem, boys? Or whatever the hell. I don't know. He's Jamaican all of a sudden. And uh, I'm terrified now because now you got to realize the situation. It's two in the morning. We're all shit-faced. We're pulling up to his apartment or his friend's apartment. Two guys with your lady. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, this yeah. could get ugly. I don't want any guys to my lady. Yeah, of course. Especially that hour in a car. It looks bad. Yeah. So I'm like, this guy could just flip the car over. Huge guy. And uh, she goes, uh, hey, they want weed. And he goes, all right, how much? And Ray goes, well, this is what she told me. And he goes, no, 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 no. And we're like, oh, God, he's getting angry. And, uh, <laughs> and Ray goes, well, we'll just pay whatever whatever it is. And he's like, he makes some deal. And it was like way higher than what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And we're like, okay, great. And we give him the money, and we just fucking hightailed out of there. Oh, boy. That was it. It was terrifying. Drug deal in an island nation in the Caribbean. Yeah, and there's stray dogs walking around. Yeah, there's, there's iguanas. Dogs everywhere. Yeah, and all the homes, you can't tell people live in them or not. Yeah. yeah there's like high grass and weird mailboxes. Not a lot of money there. It's uh, Tourism is number one, and aloe is number two. Aloe. Hello, that's yeah, fun. That's their number uh, numero deuce. I love Allo product or whatever they call it. Did you ever have a thing where you were a kid and you had a cut and your mom would just snip off the Allo and put it on your cut? No, I never had that. Oh, I did that as a kid. We had Allo in a jug, like a CS uh, we Allo, went, whatever. We went right to the source there. Uh, so yeah, then I would just bomb every night and it rained the whole time and I, we hit the beach the second day. We got some sun the second day. We just waited in the in the ocean and talked about comedy. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's bad. that ocean heals. It's healing. It heals you. Um, that sucks that it rained though, because I, I spent three weeks there and uh, not one ounce of rain. It's not a yeah. rain area. It's a desert. I know. It got to the point. I hit the gym. Oh, wow. I went to the, the gym, gym in Aruba. Aruba. Yeah, that's bad news. That is bad news. You want to go out there? You, you picture yourself drinking a coconut in a lawn chair on the beach, and I'm in a, I'm in a gym working Did you out. Get acai bowls. Come again. Acai bowl. Who? Is that, a, is that a basketball player? Ace, Ace, Lou Alcindor. A C A I. Oh, Akai. It's Acai. Oh, is it? Yeah. I can't say Acai. Well, you gotta. That sounds pretentious. I guess that's why you didn't have one. But what they is, got a hell of a bowl down there. Where's that? It's down the. I feel like you got a shit tour. You only have for three days. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. We got to get down there together. That I would, would be love ideal. that. We can do a live something. pod or or just a, a hotel pod. We'll smoke some Cubans. We'll have. Uh, we'll cheat on our wives. Ooh, I'm in. I'm in. Um, so yeah, and then the last thing is, uh, got drunk the last night. Had a flight out. Got to the airport. Doing the whole thing. Hung over. Blah blah blah. I'm in Aruba. I get up to the customs gate. uh Oh. Guy goes, uh, what are you here for? And, you know, I, I go, hey, sun, sand, and relaxation. He goes, you, you meeting anybody down here? I go, nah, just hanging out. I'm just trying to get through it. You know, it's yeah. hungover, whatever. And I'm trying to be funny. I'm like, oh, I'm so hungover. You know, these, these natives trying to get laid. Rah, rah, rah. And he's like, just eye fucking me. And, uh, I go, yeah, yeah, just hanging out. He goes, you just here for sun alone. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a writer. And he goes, all right, we're going to have to check your bag. Oh, and I boy. go, fuck. So he goes, sit over there. And he's very, uh, he just flips. He's all of a sudden mean. Oh, boy. And I'm like, I, I got a flight to get you. He goes, don't worry about it. And he goes and like whispers something to like eight other guys with fucking AK-47s. Yeah. And he comes back. And I'm just kind of like, look, I got no drugs. I didn't do shit. Fuck you. Fuck the man. I'm sitting there on my phone looking at shit. And he goes, get off your phone. Because he thinks I'm probably texting the drug czar. Right. So I'm like, all right. And he goes, we're going to have to take you over here. I go in the secret room. I go in the back room. Oh, the secret room. Yeah. And I was like, I, and a joke, I go, are you going to cavity search me? <laughs> and he goes, put the bag down. And I go, oh, geez. All right. So he's looking through my bag. And I remembered 
this is a weird thing here, but I have a bunch of sleeping pills in my bag. Uh oh. And they came out of the the thing, and they were just all over the bag. Oh, so geez. it looked weird. And I have a laptop in there, a couple books, shoes. So some of the pills got crushed. Oh. So I got all this white powder all over my bag. Oh, Jesus. And he's like, "What the hell is this?" He, he thought he had me. Oh and my I go, God. Uh, it sounds, it's a sleeping, the sleeping pills, they came out, they're, they got crushed, they're all granulated, and he's like, ah, and he's doing the, the lick test. No. He's licking. He's licking. Yeah, and I go, it's melatonin, I swear to God, and he goes, all right, you could tell it wasn't coke, I melatonin. guess. Melatonin? Yeah. That's deadly. No, nah, it's a sleeping pill. Oh, I thought melatonin was on, you had a lump on your tits. That's melanoma. Oh, melanoma. Yeah, yeah, same, very similar name. Yeah. I should change <laughs> That's that. That's a little confusing. Yeah. So... He didn't want to let me go, but he let me go, and I go, and this is where I, this is what this is what bugged me. I go, how about an apology? And he goes, what? Oh yeah, you don't get an apology from the authorities. I know, but you just called me a drug dealer and told me I was a criminal. I mean, that's an accusation. Yeah, I agree, but yeah, these people have authority. Yeah, they can do whatever the fuck they want. I feel like if you get searched and you don't get nabbed, you should get like an Obal Pan gift card or some yeah, shit. Yeah, definitely. You should get to fly the plane. Yeah, like you That's... fucked up. You made a mistake. You you missed call, you misread this. Yeah, let me take the wheel for a little while. Yeah. Let me shoot that gun. Give me a give me out of the middle seat. How about that? Yes. So, but he had no sense of humor. And I, I tried to like fist bump him, and he gave me, again he gave me the stink eye, and I left. Here's the thing: everybody wants their little piece of authority because everyone has yes. so little control in life. I was watching the dispatch guy at LaGuardia. The guy, the cab guy, that like goes, okay, okay, get in that cab. Oh, I hate that, that get guy. Get in that cab. And yeah. the, he's like, move, I'll move, move, I'll move. And he's just yelling at these cab right, guys. Right. Like, That's a human being. You're just screaming at another I human. Know. It's and all you're, they have. What do you make? You make you twelve dollars an hour. The fuck. Your job is not that cool. You hand out a piece of paper to the people and yep. you say, get in that cab. Yep. It's borderline not necessary. It's silly. And you're just screaming at people because you want to grasp that just that little piece of authority that you have and you're abusing it. Move yeah. over to the left. Move over to the left. Get out of that land. Like, right. What's wrong with you? Why I don't know. you just talk to him like he's a – just say, hey, no, that's not the right spot. Right, right. Fuck you and your family. And I will say that's, uh, that's prevalent all over the world, but it's worse at the airport. The yeah. TSA – any, everything in your pocket? What do you got in your pocket? Anything but, I got nothing in my pocket. Stop yelling at me. Right. What are you doing? This, they're empty. It's the same as the story that I, I told that when we were at Sirius there for that day and a half. Where I was on the oh, bus, yeah. and the guy just drove past the stop. He's like, ah, I didn't know. I'm like, you couldn't help me out there? Everyone oh, just, yeah. Just, everyone just be nice. Just don't right. try to abuse your dumb, shitty power. But I'm using... I have a little bit of power with people listening to me, and I'm using it to push my fucking shit. So what am I? Doing? Well, at least you're inter- you make it entertaining. I make it entertaining, and I am I'm always right. Uh-huh. Well, we got a couple minutes. Should we talk about the gig last night? Oh boy, we got to make it quick. Yeah, boy, that was uh, hellacious. We had a fan email us and say, "Hey, I heard you guys have been doing some live gigs, some stand up. I'd like to have you up in Peekskill, New York, at a nice restaurant called Gleason's." Hey, he's a comic too. Funny yeah. guy. Funny guy. And uh, so we head up there, we take the train up, and uh, it's a packed, loud restaurant on a Friday night, and the microphone stand is buried in the corner of the room. Yeah, that was. T- I had that moment, I was telling Sarah, I walked in, and I'm like, all right, well, it's probably downstairs, or and then you see that mic stand, you're Oof. like, oh, no. That's a killer. And then you hear... And oh they're, yeah, they're building the stage right at showtime. Right, right. They're, they're hammering up the lights, drilling a light into the wall. And you're like, this is gonna be a rough one. Yeah, but and we got through it. Yeah, there was only what 38 comics before us. But uh, it was tough because the back bar room was just a full on Friday night bar. Yeah, and so it was so loud, I physically could not hear you while you were on stage. Well, you say bar room, but the bar and the restaurant were pretty pretty much in this just one building. Yeah, there was no dividing. I'm just saying bar room as like a, yeah. a bar room. But yeah, room. that bar was loud, and it it might have gotten louder out of uh, resentment. Yeah. Yeah. I had a fun moment, though, where I, I was trying to, because half the room was watching the show, and then the other half was just at a Friday night bar watching the Knicks game. Right. So I got, I got together a thing. I had an idea. I was like, everyone just pretend to laugh as loud. Just pretend to just go crazy. Right. And they'll have to let, they'll, they'll hear the laugh and be like, what's going on? Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm going to say a line. You guys just go crazy. And I said, uh, so I sucked my own dick. And everyone went crazy. It was that really was fun. fun. That killed. And it worked for a second because the bar turned. Yes. And then I, I was like, I got to do another joke. And the next joke, one of the guys in the audience was like, ah! I was like, no, no, that's a one-time deal. Now yeah. just react. Right, right. And then I said that, and then every joke bombed after that. So yeah. I went back to bombing. So I had one joke hit, but I told the audience to uh, 
laugh at it. But it was all right. You yeah. Know? And then that was fun, though, because we had, like, a caper. Yes. We wanted to catch the last train out of town. We were, like, cowboys. Yeah. And so uh, while you were on stage, we had, like, you know, Jason Chatfield, he called a cab. Yeah. Which I didn't even realize. He got a cab, and then he stalled. He got the cab. Yeah. And he had to run off. We grabbed our bags, grabbed our envelopes of cash. Yeah. Jumped in the cab, shot down to the train, ran to the train, and just hopped on while it was moving. It didn't even stop. That was great. We just scaled the side and wrote, like, speed. Yeah. We, we fist fought on top on of the top. train. Yes. It was really fun. Then we I, fucked. Well, I've noticed people have a problem with leaving. You know, you go, I got to hightail out of there. And they go, all right, cool. And then when you start leaving, they go, this was great. And they shake your hand. They hug you. You're like, I said I have to leave. Yeah. I we, can't do all this. We left like Elvis. Oh, yeah. Bring in and out. out. Out of the door. Yeah, that was fun. I read the Wikipedia page for Elvis has left the building. Pretty cool. Oh, well, give it to me. Well, it started in a real, it was legit. It wasn't like a show showman thing. It was in, I think it was Alabama, and the people were going to riot. They were fucking like, shit, they wouldn't leave. They were like, wow. we want to fucking see Elvis again. Wow. Bring that motherfucker out of here. We got to get Elvis. <laughs> They're going crazy. And the guy had to get on. They were like, ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building. Wow. Like, you got to go home. How about that? Like, he was like, you're not here. And then they started incorporating it into the show. It became like a, a thing. I like it. But the first time was like a fucking, stop it. Yeah. He's, got, he's not here. Wow. They were like, if they, that they were like, if we just cheer and fucking bread the tear the place down, he'll come back out. Imagine being that great of a performer. Yeah. People want to see it that bad. Yeah, and they're like, no, no, you, he's not ignoring you. He right. left. He's home. Wow. But it's such a cool, badass thing. Yeah. Elvis has left the building. I love it. Yeah, it's kick-ass. And now it's just a saying. I know. I heard it as a kid. I never really knew what it meant. Yeah, now it's just in the psyche or Ike, whatever the fuck. It is a bummer that there's not really these superstars anymore. What are you, insane? Ah, Justin Bieber, Adele. Adele's like selling more albums than Elvis ever dreamed of selling. I know, but Adele's not gonna be like an icon. No, she's an icon. You no, th- you just can't see. You're you're doing that thing where you're all, everything in the past was better. That's a maybe, classic thing. maybe. But you know, Beyonce is not an icon. Well, if if Adele dies, no one's gonna go. Hey, I saw Adele at the the Stuckies in in Arizona. People do that with Nirvana. What? They do, yes. Yeah, Adele, Beyonce. Oh, they do that with Tupac, too. I saw Tupac upstate. Yeah, people lie about seeing people. Yeah, yeah I no, guess this so. Is huge, huge icons. Justin Bieber. I mean, U2 is that way still. And, U2, uh, really? Yeah, they're huge. These people are huge. We got to wrap up. What are, you, what are you crazy? What are we, Elvis? I mean, uh, Springsteen? We got to leave the building. Oh, Springsteen. Yeah. He's another one. Oh, he's an icon. He's my, he's my real dad. There you go. All right, we got to wrap it up here. At Joe List Comedy on Twitter. Oh, yeah, Mark Norm, everybody, on Twitter, and uh, hit hit our websites and hit our fan pages on Facebook. Oh, yes, Facebook, uh, hit the Tuesdays with Stories fan page, Comedian Joe List fan page, yeah. Mark Norman fan page. Yeah. And, uh, boy, we just uh, love you. Yeah, I'm trying to build up that Comedian Joe List page. Yeah, send us some likes and uh, come out and see us live, and uh, we love all the Chipotle. Fuck E. coli, we'll still eat it. I'll yeah. eat it right out of your asshole. We should go right now. I'm down. Uh, All right. We got to wrap it up. We love you. Thank you. You're all lunch. We'll see you next week. Bernie.